Testing, testing. One, two, three. Ah, oh, hi. It's so good to finally meet you. I'm Nigel, your park supervisor and head of zoological developments here at Prehistoric Kingdom. Since our last park manager moved to the Americas division, this place has fallen into a bit of a state. Unfinished plans, neglected habitats, all telltale signs of a much needed makeover. As I'm sure you know, our zoos are a little different, so it's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed at first. After all, it's hard for most people to imagine what dinosaurs look like, let alone manage them. We're here to change that, and I reckon this will be second nature for you in no time. Right, first things first. I'm sure you're ready to meet our friend down there, so let's make sure you can look around. Acrocanthosaurus, the high-spined lizard, an apex predator and a good one at that. Each side of its upper jaw sports 19 razor-sharp teeth, but I don't recommend getting close enough to count them all. Tall neural spines running down its back are what create that beautiful scenic silhouette, although their function remains a bit of a mystery to us. I'd love to go to get a closer look at this particular specimen, but I think I'll uh, stay this side of the fence.
This is an Archaeopteryx. Its fossil was one of the most important scientific discoveries ever made. Its name means ancient wing, not to be confused with the similarly named Paleozoic tree Archaeopteris, which means ancient fern. The distinction, of course, is quite important. In addition to its obvious bird-like traits, it also sported many traditional dinosaur features, such as sharp teeth, a bony tail, and a killing claw, similar to its distant relative, the Velociraptor. Now, I've seen skeletons of Argentinosaurus before, but nothing can prepare you for the sheer immensity of this dinosaur in the flesh. These titanic sauropods, fittingly called titanosaurs, grow rapidly. Once they reach a certain size, they're virtually untouchable and have nothing to fear from puny apex predators. Hungry guests, though, let's hope we don't find out. These titanic sauropods, fittingly called titanosaurs, grow rapidly. Once they reach a certain size, they're virtually untouchable and have nothing to fear from puny apex predators. Hungry guests, though, let's hope we don't find out. You can't get a much more classic dinosaur than Brachiosaurus. This is the iconic high-browsing sauropod, feeding on nutritious leaves and branches way up in the trees. These beautiful creatures can eat around 400 kilograms per day, so I'd better go check to see if our latest food delivery arrived on time. If not, we might have a bit of a problem. Look at the size of this magnificent animal. 
The way it moves about, with the grace fit for a giant. It's a real privilege to be able to cherish these beautiful creatures. Carmarasaurus, the star of the Morrison Formation. Don't let its peculiar mouth scare you. The long chisel-like teeth may look like carnivores, but they are actually much better adapted to rip coarse leaves from tree branches. Although to be fair, we haven't really put the theory to the test. One of the reasons this animal is so common in the fossil record is the sturdiness of its blunt skull. Looking at it more closely, I can uh, sort of see how that could be the case. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Woolly rhino or coelodontar is a relative to the modern day Sumatran rhino. Not unlike modern species, this rhinoceros sports two horns on its face. A key difference to note, however, is its unusual flattened shape. That's truly unique among its peers. Our ancient ancestors were very familiar with these beasts and illustrated them in cave paintings on several occasions. It's not hard to see why. They're remarkably handsome, don't you think? Now this is an interesting fellow. This dinosaur is called Dinocerus, a name meaning horrible hand. First discovered as a giant pair of arms, we now know that Dinocerus resembled a huge humpbacked goose roaming the marshy wetlands of prehistoric Mongolia. Mm-hmm. 
Although it may look intimidating, this animal's diet primarily consisted of fish and plants. A real connoisseur, don't you think? A Dryosaurus. They originally inhabited forested areas of the late Jurassic, with their name literally translating to tree lizard. I wonder if they bark. Only juvenile specimens of these dinosaurs have been found in the fossil record, so I'm eager to see how much larger this one will get. Found all over Western North America, Edmontosaurus is the textbook definition of a hadrosaur. Although it doesn't have a magnificent bony crest like its more famous relatives, some Edmontosaurus sport their own flashy headgear in the form of a comb made entirely from soft tissue. one of the most well-studied animals in the fossil record, providing us with a wealth of insight into how they ate, socialised and survived. Iguanodon one of the first dinosaurs to be formally named. This creature's restorations weren't always perfect, though. 
See those thumb spikes? They were once thought to be nasal horns, sort of like an iguana's. Very wrong, of course, but A plus for name inspiration. Reconstructions of this animal have changed dramatically over the years, from a giant rhinoceros-like reptilian beast to the beautiful animal you see before you now. It really makes you wonder what will paleontologists discover next to fundamentally change the way we view other dinosaurs. Lambiosaurus, a crested hadrosaur from the late Cretaceous. Like others of its kind, it uses its unique hatchet-shaped crest as a sort of resonating chamber. Though not essential, it's also great at giving a thumbs up. In my opinion, the most interesting thing about hadrosaurs isn't the presence or absence of a crest, but the way they move. They're able to walk as bipeds or quadrupeds as the situation demands, a rare feature in the animal kingdom. Mammoth, ruler of the Ice Age, then ruler of none. There's nothing quite like it on the planet today. Just like their closest elephant cousins, mammoths are highly social, forming large family groups led by matriarchs. So that means we need to make sure we give them enough company. I would hate to see them feel lonely.
It's not going to be easy caring for these elephants, but luckily there's a lot of research we can reference as we try to keep them fit and healthy. They represent so much of what we've set out to do, so we can't disappoint the world now. This handsome little fella is one of my personal favourites, the Microraptor. That beautiful iridescent colour of its feathers isn't actually pigment. It's a structural colour, which means that the structure of the feather itself reflects light in such a way that it's perceived as a colour. Hummingbirds do the same thing today. This must be Nasuta ceratops, a ceratopsian best identified by its large cow-like features. Much like a rhino or, well, a cow, its horns are sheathed in keratin, the same material that makes up scales, feathers, fingernails and even hair. This massive creature weighs approximately one and a half tons. To put that into perspective, a mature Spanish fighting bull can weigh up to 0.7 tons. Imagine setting that loose on the streets of Pamplona in Spain. Ah, a Pachyrhinosaurus. I've been told that these dinosaurs are quite bossy. <laughs> Instead of a nasal horn, Pachyrhinosaurus sports an overgrown mass of bone called a nasal boss above its eyes and nose. It certainly lives up to its name, the thick-nosed lizard.
My, that head looks heavy. Thankfully, the frill extending off the back of its head is hiding a secret. There are two large holes punched straight through the bone to relieve the weight of all those adornments. The holes aren't visible during life. As you can see, they're beneath all that skin and keratin. Now that, my friend, is a beautiful dinosaur. Almost like a musical instrument, Parasaurolophus used their crest for long-distance communication. There's been simulations in the past that tried to reconstruct how they could have sounded, but nothing quite compares to the real thing. They didn't use their tube-shaped crest as a snorkel, contrary to previous hypotheses. Nevertheless, I quite like the mental image of a Parasaurolophus going snorkeling. <laughs> Protoceratops. This animal is one of the smaller species of ceratopsians, living alongside deadly neighbours like the Velociraptor. One famous fossil preserves a Protoceratops and a Velociraptor locked in battle. Hmm, I know that look in your eyes. I don't care if it's in the name of science. Don't put the two species together. We don't need to deal with another ethics violation. Oddly enough, this animal lacks a lot of the more complex facial features seen in larger family members. 
like a certain three-horned celebrity. Now this little fella is a Psittacosaurus. Just like other Ceratopsians, Psittacosaurus is a herbivore, but its sharp beak and simple jaws are better suited to tough plant material such as nuts or seed. A word of advice though, be wary of that beak. They're a little nippy. Just looking at its face, you might not realise that this was one of the first Ceratopsians. It may lack a frill and forward projecting horns, but you can still see the resemblance in its strong beak and its cheek horns. Oh boy, that's a big kitty. More commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, Smilodon makes for a formidable predator. Despite the looks, Smilodon isn't closely related to any modern cats. It's more accurately called a Macarodont, although I wouldn't worry too much about making the distinction. Just try to keep those saber teeth away from the guests. <laughs> This large feline could gape its mouth to impressive extents, up to 120 degrees, almost twice as much as a lion. I would love to see it in action from a safe distance. With a head like that, we must be looking at Styracosaurus. The purpose of these gorgeous frills has long vexed paleontologists. Were they primarily for display, temperature regulation, or neck protection? Now that we have one in the flesh, 
Hopefully, we can solve this mystery once and for all. The fossil record shows a bone bed of what was assumed to be a herd of these animals. But from what I've found, they're far more antisocial than expected. Perhaps a result of modern climatic conditions or irregularities in the genome. I'll leave that up for you to decide. Ah yes, the Torvosaurus, an apex predator of the Jurassic. In its heyday, Torvosaurus was what zoologists would call a cosmopolitan species. Now I know what you're thinking, and no, that does not mean that this dinosaur enjoys delicious fruity cocktails. Triceratops, one of the most recognisable and largest dinosaurs of its kind. Having lived alongside predators like the T-Rex, those giant horns start to make a lot more sense. Now, 
let's all not mix the two together. Several fossilised Triceratops have been given nicknames, like Lane, Hatcher or Homer. Personally, I prefer names starting with T. There it is, the one and only king of the tyrant lizards. Tyrannosaurus is as big as the movies, and yet somehow even scarier. T-Rex has the most powerful bite force of any land animal on the planet. And if those massive jaws weren't threatening enough, you know it could swallow you and me both in one go. This is a creature of pure instinct, so let's hope it doesn't try to take back its kingdom anytime soon. While your favourite dinosaur movie might have depicted the T-Rex with rather poor vision, brain scans have revealed that its vision rivaled that of modern birds of prey, which means that it's watching you just as much as you're watching it. Eerie stuff. <laughs>